So this week we are set to speed back up again. It's been a bit of a chill couple of weeks while a few people take a couple of holidays. Obviously the 4th of July as well, so obviously that slows things down a little bit. But I think this week we are going to see the market speed up again and we should see the market have more bigger moves and should wake up a little bit in the next coming few days. Now the SP itself has had a bit of a chilling out phase. We've been on a bigger bit of a run, we've had a bit of a cool down, and that's good. It's good that we have a stock market that every so often has a bit of a cool down. We do not want to slingshot too much in the upwards direction because as you guys saw in 2021, we'll very quickly slingshot down in the wrong direction. And it's the same as if we sling too quickly in the down direction, we'll slingshot quickly quite up into the right direction, which we saw in this year, in 2023. So this week, we should see things start to wake up and hopefully I'll point a few of those things out for you and also some interesting thoughts I saw on a company that reported earnings last week as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, smash the like button. If you are on the Patreon, I dropped my US stock market, stock market portfolio review. So go check that out on the page when we post two exclusive videos a week if you do want to join link is in the description but starting off the market in the last week seemed to focus around china and the exporting of chip making metals which seemed to slow the market down a little bit obviously that relating to one of the stocks that's really been propping up the market at the moment nvidia a lot of focus seemed to go on that there was seemed to be a little bit of focus on about the jobs added uh, being slower in june now let's be honest it was slightly below estimates Every other job report so far has been really hot. So the fact that people are trying to make this as a slowing economy just because the jobs came slightly under this month, I'll believe it when we see it more consistently and that slowing down gets more and more. But it seemed like people were looking for something negative to push, push down the market this week. And these stocks seem to get a little bit more attention than what they should have done. So these weren't major issues that were out there for me. The big thing this week and what will dictate the market going forward for the next couple of weeks is this inflation data we get the next set of inflation data out for june this comes out on the 12th of july so on wednesday we'll see what is going on with inflation now this is massively gone under the radar once again and i think that the market should have been getting a little bit more excited about this last week than what it did do now previously analysts were forecasting inflation to come in from the four percent and we were going to hit the three percent now this is really good because if you imagine when we go back to start of the year we thought we may hit the 3% by the end of the year, potentially the 2% by the end of the year. We are going to hit the 3% in June, or July, if you say it's, uh, we are in July, I guess, um, but it's from the June data. So we're going to hit the we're going to hit the 3% already. So this is really, really good. And the fact that this pretty much confirms that we are going to hit 2% this year, which is obviously what the Fed is targeting. Now, this is what's the more impressive part that no one is talking about. And in fact, the market should have got excited by this massively. We previously, only a week ago, we were expecting inflation to come to 4% into 3.6%. Now, you guys probably saw me a few weeks ago. I was saying, no, 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 it's going to come even lower. We're going to be in somewhere between the 3.3 to 3.4% range. Now, this is where it gets even better. The new predictions is that the consensus will be to come in at 3.1% to 3.2 we are going to be nearly touching the two percent range and if we have a big surprise and we actually end up with the three percent or even in fact if we see a 2.9 imagine how good that is going to be we are going to be at the two percent range for inflation that is fantastic now we might not see that because obviously that's below the the consensus at the moment but you never know and also that would also probably mean that when we do get to july's data in august we are probably then going to see the two percent in july so we are only a month away more than likely from seeing the two percent inflation now which is absolutely fantastic and the thing is everyone's going to turn around and act surprised and be like oh we're two percent inflation we we didn't see this coming like it's, it's not being talked about but for us we know about this because what everyone else has been doing and the Fed in particular have been using a lot of lagging indicators. They've been using a lot of lagging indicators that hasn't been showing where inflation realistically is at. And energy prices, this is a big thing, energy prices is the key driver of inflation. When energy prices goes up, everything else follows. That is a leading indicator. When energy prices drop, everything else follows. And it's exactly what's happened once again. Energy prices have dropped massively, 
everything else is catching up. And that's the prime example when you look at true inflation. True inflation is a really good indicator of where we actually are. And you'll see here that when we were in June time of 2022, true inflation was actually 11%. Now true inflation is down at 2.5% and slowly we've seen all these other, what the Fed would use, all these other lagging indicators finally start catching up with what inflation is at. So where we probably realistically are at 2% right now, it's going to take a while for the ones that the Fed used to actually show 2%, but we are there. But all of a sudden everyone's going to actually act surprised and go, oh, we're at 2%, can you believe that? But we've known that because... The, the metrics that are, are mostly used are old metrics, metrics that are very lagging indicators that show what inflation is actually at. Now, obviously, this is actually really good because obviously you look at the US economy and obviously I think the US economy, is, I think, is in, in a fantastic place right now. You know, interest rates should peak. Obviously, we've got the Fed meeting. The Fed will meet in the tw from the 25th to the 26th and then put out the what the rate is going to be on the 26th of July, so that's only uh, two weeks away. They should pause again. They, they We shouldn't see a hike. Obviously, the the talk is at the moment that the Fed are going to pay, you know, maybe do a small hike. I don't know if they're just saying that for the sake of giving them space. If they need to hike it up, then they can do, but they, sh they shouldn't hike up. We should be done. We should pause. We shouldn't go any higher now. We should probably have done it uh, probably two or three months ago, but we should pause now. You know, when we look at inflation, inflation is going to be... If, just in the 3% range. We're going to touch 2% in a month's time. Uh, true inflation is already at 2% range. There's no need to hike up. You know, we should be talking about, uh, you know, probably cutting in the coming few months more than anything. So from the US point of view, you know, you look at the, the stock prices, the economy, and you think, well, you know, inflation has been dealt with. Uh, interest rates should now pause. And obviously with everyone knowing what interest rates are and not changing anymore, that should really help the economy. So the US is in a, a, a really good place, I feel like. And we should see a deep, in my opinion, we should see a good rally towards the back end of the year. Obviously, it's very different because then, you know, from the UK side has been a total different story at the moment. You know, we're still, unfortunately, you know, on true inflation sitting at 11.44%. And I'm sure most of you guys can, can confirm confirm that, you know, when you're going out on the high street and going shopping, you know, prices are still going up sky high. It's absolutely crazy at the moment. And it is uh, depressing to see. And it is obviously causing the opportunities out there in the UK market at the moment, you know, you look at a lot of the UK stocks and that's potentially where I'm seeing a lot of the, you know, the opportunities at the moment with a lot of the UK stocks down and uh, especially dividend stocks are off offering good yields. But then you look at the US and I, I expect the US has obviously has done quite well and I would expect it still to continue very well going forward. So we'll see what happens there. I'm sure we'll be making a video about that on Wednesday. And also, you guys might not know, you might know, it's the start of earnings season. So earnings season is back again. Uh, as you can see here, that it's a bit of a quiet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But as we get into Thursday, we start to get Delta, PepsiCo. And as you can see here on Friday, we start to have the banks creep in, which are always the start of earnings season. We've got JP Morgan, we've got Citigroup, Wells Fargo, BlackRock. They're going to be reporting earnings on Friday. So that will indicate the start of earnings season. And then you'll see the earnings from the week after really start piling up so yeah it's come around really quick and uh, we'll see what happens with earnings season now one company that did report earnings last week was levi's so you might have seen that levi's on friday was down 7.7 percent .7%. and in general the stock hasn't been doing really well since 20 it's a common theme is that isn't it stock hasn't been doing well since 2021 uh, the stock is down nearly 51 percent from that time frame if i actually go from the high here when it touched 30 dollars yeah, the stock's down on 56%. So that does put the company now at 10 times earnings and a 3.6% dividend yield. And um, I was looking at the earnings and I think you've got to be careful here because I, I think you'll see a few companies do this. Levi's tried to blame on the macro environment by the looks of it. But realistically, when you look into the company, there was a little bit more like, oh, it was actually a little bit of our fault why we posted week earnings and that's why the, the stock dropped so the cut the guidance as you can see here slightly not massively i didn't think it was a massive cut to be fair but he said wholesale revenue was impacted by q2 by a consumer slowdown impacting the re retail industry so that's the big thing that we've seen a few people say you know consumer spending being hit in the moment and people blaming the macro environment and you're going oh look you know the weak the weakening of the economy is starting to happen but then you said and you read here it says and internal issues at Levi's that resulted in items being out of stock according to CEO Chip Burr. I hope I said that one right. Our inventory backlog created supply chain challenges in our US distribution centers, resulting in our inability to fulfill all demand. The lower fill rate resulted in higher customer out of stock and less newness on the floor 
the last few quarters. We're taking a number of actions to address these, um, and uh, yeah, it goes on a few a bit more there. But I thought this was interesting, and I thought this is sums up what a few companies might try to do at the moment. So you can see it clearly. There was an issue with Levi's in the last kind of quarter that caused them to lower the guidance a little bit. So I looked at this and I was like, is this company like making a financial mistake and then blaming it on the macro environment to try to get away from it? I actually thought that was a little bit there. And I think you've got to be careful here because I, I think a few companies might try to do this is that they'll suggest because we've seen some companies absolutely still flying at the moment on their earnings. And then a few companies, you know, point, you know, fingers at the economy and it's like, if it was economy issue, we probably should see pretty much every company saying they're seeing weakening demand, not only a couple. And I thought Levi's was one of those companies that were trying to get away here and saying, oh, it was the macro environment, but realistically, they're actually, it's an issue inside the company that why this issue is going on. And I thought there could be a few companies that try to do this. And especially a company like Levi's in this retail space, we saw this massively with companies like Boohoo, you know, companies that are in this retail space are prone to competition so realistically are they just getting beaten on a competition point of view by one two percent and then they blame that one two percent on a competition issue because that one two percent of customers actually you know oh, don't actually like levi styles at the moment i'm going somewhere else to go buy them one two percent and that's also something that I, I thought would be something to be careful of. I, I thought that was quite interesting. I thought it was quite interesting to see that there might be a few companies that do this, that have internal issues or competition issues, especially in this quarter, and then actually um, blame it on the economy. Because especially when you look at the profit guidance as well being cut by 15%, I would expect a lot of companies at the moment in the physical market to be posting very good numbers at the moment because what you're seeing is the cost come down rapidly. You're seeing the container cost come rap rapidly down. You're seeing material costs coming down. I would expect companies in these sort of spaces at the moment to actually be posting good margin uh, increases rather than decreases as well, which is something that would worry me as well. So yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. I thought Levi's was a company that's trying to bit blame stuff on the macro environment rather than internal issues. But I've got to say, you know, I was looking at Levi's and I thought, you know, it is a strong brand and I think they'll be okay. You know, 10 times earnings now, 3.6% uh, dividend yield. And I was looking at the the company itself, and obviously they're probably going to have a bit of a poor year. But if they can go back to a couple three four percent revenue growth, three four percent profit growth. In fact, um, on uh, Simple Wall Street here, they're actually predicting to go from four hundred and eleven million profit up to uh, five hundred and forty eight million profit, and then six hundred and ten million profit. That's even better than three four percent revenue uh, profit growth as well, uh, which would be absolutely amazing. I was looking at the balance sheet as well. Uh, balance sheet, they really started to strengthen the balance sheet, as you can see here, a lot better position than where they were. Dividend wise, they pay, obviously they pay a dividend at the moment, um, forecast that when the profit goes up, the yield will go up 4%, uh, 4.1%, uh, then up to 4.7%. And the payout rate is only around 44% of earnings. I thought, you know, it's it's not actually that bad of a valuation in a dividend stock at the moment. I thought this is actually quite an interesting opportunity. I always a little bit worried with the kind of clothing apparel space because of how flaky customers can be and competition can be. That was the only little issue, but I thought that drop was a little bit of an interesting one. Um, would be good to see on this dip if some insiders come buy some shares. That's something that I'd be looking for. That would give you a little bit of confidence. But I was looking at it thinking this is quite an interesting dividend stock on the on the uh, the US side side at the moment. Anyway, so might have a little bit of a look into this one anyway and see if uh, they can resolve these issues that they do have. So I thought I'd point that one out. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Anyway, guys, um, if you could smash the like button if you're new around here, subscribe. Catch you in a bit.